Okay, hi, uh, my name is Derek Harder, and I'm your instructor for your course here. Um, this video, um, we're going to go over the steps for getting, for setting up your uh, class dev box for the uh, course. Okay, dev box is short for development box. Um, and this, this video is specifically for the uh, Windows operating system. I'll try and have a separate video for Mac OS, although this, the steps are pretty similar. So um, we simply need to get three things installed. Um, and then we'll be using Git in order to clone um, a repository, which is basically downloading the files that you need to set up this this development box. Okay, um, I'll talk a little bit maybe uh, later about what the development box is and kind of how it works. Uh, okay, so um, um, these are the the three pieces of software that you need on your system, and, and I'm going to show you setting this up um, on a Windows system here. So you'll need uh, a Git client. So Git is a software um, management system, so a source code management or source code uh, revision control system. Okay, so you're going to be possibly in this course you're going to be learning about Git a little bit. And then you need some virtualization tools, so VirtualBox. We're going to be using um, um, Oracle's VirtualBox solution, or, or I'm going to suggest that you use that, and Vagrant. All right. Um, now this video, I'm going to be showing you uh, how to set this up for my 2336, which is uh, my algorithms and um, data structures class. So you might be watching this video for a different class. Um, that's fine. The instructions are pretty much the same. The only thing that will be different will be the URL of the repository I give you that you're supposed to do on this step four. Okay. And, and the other thing that might be different is, so in, in, for this particular example, what you end up at the end is you end up with a Visual Studio development um, IDE, but, but the server or the development environment that you end up with for your class could be slightly different. So the, the, the things for step, uh, should be step five here, might be slightly different. But, but otherwise, this should all be the same. And, and like I said, for Mac OS, basically, you need to install the same three pieces of software, um, so it's pretty similar, all right? So anyway, let, let's get started with this. Um, um, so I've got a Windows environment here. So so normally uh, the, the the URL that I give you, there'll be more detailed instructions for that. So you'll want to go to that URL that I give you in my Leo Online um, and 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 do these um, steps. So the first thing you need to do is is download and install these three pieces of things that I already mentioned. So I've actually already downloaded these, but um, for Windows, the first thing that we want to do is, is is, is obtained the git git um, um, installer here so oops so if um, so if you go to this link that I have here for Windows you should be able to um, go to the downloads page and, and download the installer for you. So for Windows, this is a standard Windows installer. So being a little bit slow here, I'm not too certain why we're so slow. Um, okay, there we are. So for Windows, you'll just, you'll most likely you'll want to get the 64-bit. So if you don't know if you're 32-bit or 64-bit, get the 64-bit. That's that's probably what you have, okay? So you just want to install that. Like I said, I already installed that. So if you, so if you click on that, or I already, I, sorry, I didn't already install it. I already did download it, though. So I usually just save these, like save these in my downloads area. But if you want to, you can hit run and download it and then run it for you. So it's, it's usually better to save it because you might need to reinstall it or do something like that, okay? Um, so... Um, all three of these installers are pretty standard Windows installers if you're on a Windows OS, okay? Um, so um, I've got it, I've got Git um, down, downloaded to my downloads directory here. Um, and if you double click on this or if you selected run when you were downloading it, um, it'll start up the installer for you. Um, you can select all these defaults, so just let it install it on the, the program files uh, in, a, in a new subdirectory called git. Uh, leave just those selected components. But there's one thing that you should probably check. Um, you can go ahead and just allow it to use VIM. Um, um, and, and 
and let it use let, let get decide the initial branch here. Um, so when it asks you for the uh, line ending, um, you should probably change this to check out as is because uh, you're going to be doing things. Um, your dev box is going to be running from a Windows host if you're installing this on a Windows system, but it actually runs a version of, of Linux. It runs an Ubuntu version um, in your virtual machine, your virtual development box. Okay, so if I didn't mention, dev box is short for development box. All right, um, so so have it check out um, as is instead of trying to convert the the line endings. All right. Um, and that should be it. So select all the the rest of the defaults and go ahead and install it. And so like I said, this is the standard installer. So it should install all these. Git should be relatively fast. I might pause for um, the, the next two installations a bit, but um, um, I think we can wait and let this one go ahead and finish installing here. So once this is done installing, um, you'll need to run a few things from a command line, all right? So if you've never used a command line on Windows before, um, um, you should have it installed. So if, if you bring up your start menu uh, and just do a search for like um, command, so M M A N D or C M D, you should get um, you know uh, the the command prompt application. That's what you want to run. Um, and I usually kind of like right click on this and pin it to my taskbar. I've already got it pinned to my taskbar down here. So here's my command line. Uh, my command prompt, okay, um, and that's what it's talking about here to, to to test that we installed that you have Git installed the way you need it. Um, um, uh, we're gonna go down here and uh, use a command prompt here, okay? So we're basically done here. Um, um, you don't want to launch the Git bash, and you don't really want to view the release now. So we're finished. So let's check it out here. So after installing, you should be able to run Git from the command. There's, there's other ways of using Git that you may learn about uh, in this course. Um, but um, I'm going to open up a command prompt. So notice it, it, it opens up with the idea that your current working directory is in your home directory. Okay, so I'm logged in onto my Windows system as a user called Vagrant um, in this case because uh, I'm already using Vagrant here. Uh, but um, anyway, so... Um, um, <coughs> on Windows, if you use uh, CD, it tells you what your current directory is. CD will also let you change your current directory if you want to. So we can use uh, the where command to say where get. So um, if, if you get an error message here, that means that you didn't get it installed correctly or it's not on your path for some reason. Okay, So you want to make certain that it finds it. So for example, um, if, if here I just spelled the name wrong, but, it, but if you spelled it correctly, but it tells you it could not find the file, that means that you really don't have it installed correctly the way you need it to do the steps here later on here, right? Um, and then um, I downloaded version and installed version, um, what was it, 2.31 in this test here, so I need to update my, uh, my example output here. So you should probably have... So, so you can check the version by running git, that's two dashes, dash dash version. Um, so, I, so I actually download and install version 2.31. So if you're watching this video, you should probably have 2.31 or, or, or even uh, more recent than that, 2.323. So something higher version of that, okay? So that, that's all to install git. Um, so we've now got um, git installed. So um, the next piece of software that you need installed is VirtualBox. So this is a virtualization um, um, management tool, actually a virtualization host. Uh, so you can run, it's, it's a hyper, um, what's, it, what's it called? Um, so, so it allows you to run virtual machines basically on your um, host machine where I'm showing you Windows as our host machine here. So again, I have a link, or I should have a link if, if um, if, if you followed the um, repository that I gave you to do all this work from for your class, again, the repository might not be exactly named this, um, uh, but, but if you open up that link, um, it should take you to the correct page to download VirtualBox. 
So again, for Windows, you'll want to go to the Windows host uh, or click on that, and that will download it for you. Um, so I guess there's no 32 or 64-bit. Uh, and again, you can either run it or save it, right? So I already saved it as um, uh, in my downloads directory. So I'll double click on that to start the installer. Um, one hint about this, when you install new stuff, if you already have a terminal running, you want to be careful. So you, you want to close this off because normally when you run an installer, it updates sort of your path environment variable. Um, so anyway, let's go ahead and close that off. You can exit off or just hit the X um, either way so, so I can start a new terminal here. So I think that, that the, the defaults it asks you about for VirtualBox is a lot simpler than for Git. Um, but again, you should be able to select all the default or, or accept the defaults that it suggests for you. Um, gives you a warning here, but, but you want to um, install that so it will update your networking features for you here. And just go ahead and install. All right. So um, I can't remember. This installer might be a little bit longer, so we might pause the video here. Um, so notice, uh, uh, VirtualBox actually has a GUI. Uh, so for your develop your debt your class dev box here, you won't be using this GUI. I'll, I'll talk a little bit about that later here. So, so you normally shouldn't be using this, this the, the GUI that installs for you to manage your class dev box. Okay, I, that was fashion, I thought. So, um, and and again, I'm going to unclick that, so I'm not going to start it. Um, um, you, you can you can play around with that, but sh you normally shouldn't be running the the Oracle uh, VirtualBox GUI here. Okay, so we're all finished with the installation uh, VirtualBox. Um, so again. Um, you can you can test that this installed correctly. Um, so I have the 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 command here. So so actually, uh, VirtualBox isn't really meant to be run from a command line tool like this. It is meant to be run from the GUI uh, manager, but you can run certain things from the command line. Um, so I'm just going to like copy and paste this. Uh, so it, so it doesn't install VirtualBox on the path. So you can't just run VBox manage on your path. So you have to you have to specify the full path if you want to find out the version for the command line. But I can just do Control C to copy that. Um, and I don't know if I can do Control V, but I can do like an edit. Yeah, I can do Control V uh, to paste that in there. And that should be able to, to if you've got VirtualBox run, you should be able to run this whole full path to find the version. Um, so again, in this video, I actually installed version 6.1.22, so more recent than what I showed you. Um, I'll try and update this before I post this video here, but um, you should have 6.1.22 or, or maybe a, um, a higher version than that um, if you install this correctly here. So that's VirtualBox. Um, and then the last tool you need is Vagrant. Okay, this is a, a management tool for virtualization. All right. Um, so again, um, you should be able to go to the, the download page, um, and it will, I guess, detect that if you're a Windows user, it'll detect and offer you to um, install a binary for Windows. Again, this is a standard Windows installer. Um, again, you'll probably want the 64-bit unless you know otherwise, but you most likely have a 64-bit version of the operating system. So if you click on that again, um, it'll ask you whether you want to run or, um, or or save it. So I saved this already to my downloads directory here. Um, um, so, so this is Vagrant version 2.2.16. So I'll double click on that to go ahead and start the installer um, again here. I do believe this install takes a little bit of time here, but uh, but again, in terms of the the defaults or the questions it asks you, you can select select all the defaults here. You have to accept the uh, terms of service, let it install uh, in the location that it wants to, and then go ahead and install. So this this will probably take a little bit longer than the other two, I believe here. So we might pause for a bit here. Uh, but while this is installing, um, there's a couple of things you need to check here. Um, 
and I'll go and do these, uh, but, but after this is done installing, you'll want to reboot your system, and when you reboot your system, you'll want to check that you've got virtualization enabled on your system, like I mentioned here. But uh, before we do that, one thing that you want to do uh, before you do the reboot is um, on this link here. This is only for Windows users, so if you're a Mac user, you don't have to do either of these. Um, but you, you want to check this. You might not have this Hyper-V setting, um, and I have to remind myself how to open this up. So, so I think um, you'll want to go to your control panel, panel and open up, find the programs and features, and then, and then um, uh, navigate down to this here. So, so, so here I usually just open up my start window and do a search for my control panel. Um, but that should allow me to, um, oh, pardon me, I'm going to have to pause here for a second. Okay, um, I'm back from pausing for quickly. I, I, I went ahead and let the um, uh, Vagrant complete up, but, but let me finish this off here. So we were looking at, um, I, I just, you should check um, and disable Hyper-V if it's enabled. Um, so yeah, if you search for your control panel, um, you should be able to find it and bring that up. Um, and then you have to uh, uh, open up the uh, the Windows features here. Um, I'll search for that as well. So there we go. So, so that's what you actually want was to, to turn the Windows features on and off, basically. So, uh, and then you just have to find. So, so there's the Hyper V. Um, um, Hyper-V, so, so, so you, you know, yours might be enabled, um, uh, so you have to go to there, to Hyper-V, uh, Management Tools, so make sure you click all the way down here, um, or sorry, Hyper-V Platform, um, and um, uh, just check this one in particular, so make certain that the uh, Hyper-V hypervisor is disabled there, all right? So do that before you reboot here at this step. Um, and then the other thing when you reboot is you, you want to check that you have, you want to get into your BIOS and, and check that you've got um, virtualization, hardware support uh, enabled for your virtualization um, on your machine here, okay? So um, let me come back to that just before I reboot. So uh, um, we, we actually finished the installation of um, Vagrant here. Um, so actually, I suggest that you go ahead and reboot before you check these here. So really, that, that should be all you have to do. Uh, but, but yeah, like it says, you, uh, you do have to, there, there's some things that need to be um, done, um, need to be rebooted uh, for Vagrant to finish up its installation. So um, uh, you can go ahead and hit yes um, and, and restart your machine. So. Um, so again, I'm going to pause here while that reboots, and we'll come back after the reboot. Okay, um, we're back after a successful reboot um, at this point. So, um, uh, what you should do while you're rebooting here, I didn't talk about it, but uh, you should check your BIOS settings, okay? So, if you've never gotten into your BIOS before, there, there's a little bit of um, um, some help on maybe doing that. So, normally what you have to do is when it's booting up um, in, in the initial boot screen, you'll have to hit some sort of a function key. So it's often F2. Um, you can maybe check here and find your your. Uh, it's not always, uh, but but um, um, it might be F12 or something else, right? But but anyway, you need to get into the BIOS and then look for the um, processor or CPU settings. Okay, so if if you're on an Intel uh, system, um, there'll probably be some sort of a setting called VT-X. That's what. Intel calls the hardware virtualization setting. You need to make certain that's enabled. Um, if your CPU is an AMD instead, um, you'll want to get to your processor or CPU settings and look for the AMD-V instead. Okay, But make certain that's enabled. Um, or else, when you try and start up your dev box, uh, you'll get it. Normally, the message is pretty clear. It'll be a message something like, you don't have hardware virtualization enabled if, if you skip this step or don't do it. Okay? 
So it might already be enabled, so a, a lot of systems nowadays kind of come with that enabled by default, uh, but, but not, not all of them, um, so, and, and probably not the majority of them. So you definitely do need to check that if you're a Windows user, okay? So again, after that reboot, uh, you, you, you want to check that you had Vagrant installed correctly. So, so again, from Windows, you'll want to open up a terminal. Uh, uh, Vagrant is meant to be used. It's, it's, it's a command line tool, so you want so, so this should be on your path. Um, so you should be able to, sorry, not which, you should be able to, for, for uh, Windows, do aware, um, and it should be able to find it on your path. And you should be able to run vagrant commands, including version. Um, so again, here I in this video I just showed installing uh, version uh, 2.2.16. So um, you'll want to have that or a higher version, basically, um, if you're watching this video to get your dev box set up for the class. So. Um, all right. So, once you've done that, um, then you're ready to actually get your dev box um, set up and working, okay? So, um, um, uh, the, the fourth step is you're going to use git to clone this repository, okay? Um, the, the one that I'm scrolling through these more detailed instructions for, all right? So, but again, I mean, your repository might be slightly different if, if you're in a different class, um, but um, to do that, um, that's from the command line. You want to do a git clone. Although I, I suggest that you um, um, put um, all your repositories into a separate uh, directory. Um, I usually call it repos. Um, so you can do this from the command line, or you can do this from you know from from a file browser. Um, either way. So, you know, uh, although you do need to know, you have to have some idea of what your home directory is, okay? So, so when you open up um, a command prompt, um, it starts you in uh, C colon users and then your username, right? So C colon users and then your username. That, that's my home directory. That's my, my current directory. So, you know, I, I could like right click on here and do like a new folder if I wanted to, um, uh, to create like a repos folder. Or I could do the make directory command like I showed you here. Um, so that just creates um, um, a, a directory called repos. And, and if, um, as, as maybe you saw here, so now I, I can see it from the file browser, or I can see it um, from um, the, uh, the, the command prompt terminal I have here. Here's the repos. And you, you want to change into that. All right, so this should be an empty directory at, the point, at this point here. Um, and we'll want to do this git clone here. So again, if you're not using that same directory name, um, whenever you're working on a repository, um, like like from GitHub or some similar um, um, git repository system, um, you should have somewhere where it allow you to... Um, I don't know why that's not pulling down here, but, but it'll allow you to... Uh, pull down and get the URL of, uh, th that you want to do your git clone from if you want to clone or basically download the repository. Um, I don't know, that might be a bug with Microsoft Edge here. Um, but in, in any case, um, you should be able to run this git clone uh, step you, you might have to change this the the URL here right so I'll go and copy that and paste it so, so again this needs to be done from um, a, a command prompt terminal so I, I just copied and pasted that here and hit return um, and, and you can think of this for for the time being as just downloading files so this will this will clone the files uh, which will pull all the files that you'll need uh, to set up your uh, class dev box here right so after you do that, you'll find that there's a new subdirectory inside of the repos directory, the, the place where I just ran that command, called, in this case, cosc 2336 devbox So I can see it here from my terminal, um, or I can see it here from my file browser. And um, there, there's files in here, including a Vagrant file. 
So um, what you'll want to do then for step five is change into that directory um, and then do a vagrant up. All right. So um, what this will do then, uh, this, this will do the actual installation of your class development box when you do the vagrant up here, okay? So um, um, I'm actually running in an environment where I can't quite do this, but you should be able to do a vagrant up and you'll see that it'll, it'll start, it'll, it'll download a bunch of stuff and it'll stall some stuff um, and then it should actually start your development box up, all right? So I'm going to pause the video here. Um, uh, th this can take some time for this step here. So the very first time you do this, it has to uh, download the, a base box um, for you, and that has to do a bunch of installation. So depending on your connection speed and other stuff, it might take a lot of time. But later on, you'll want to do the same thing. You'll want to do the same Vagrant Up if you want to restart your class dev box. Um, after everything's installed, uh, the, the up will be relatively quick. Just It'll just take, you know, 10 or 20 seconds to bring it up again, okay? So let me pause here, uh, but you should go ahead and do the Vagrant Up to get everything installed, and then I'll come back once I've um, done a Vagrant Up installation myself and show you uh, finishing up um, and, and using your, your class dev box, all right? Okay, um, so let me um, um, just uh, walk you through kind of the what happens here when you do your first vagrant up. Okay, just make certain you understand what to expect here. So um, I, I switched over to a different terminal. Hopefully that doesn't um, um, confuse you. Uh, I, I'm basically in, you know, I, I changed directory into the um, repository that we cloned like I showed you but before I jumped here um, we did I did my initial vagrant up so what you'll see is a bunch of messages come out um, you might not get color coding depending on you know what kind of a terminal you're using and, and what operating system you're running from okay but th this, this can take some time it actually has to um, um, it has to import this base box, so it actually has to download uh, a base box with an Ubuntu installation in it. So that may take some time, and after it does that, it actually also has to download and install a bunch of stuff, uh, including the development tools. Um, if you're using the dev box for like um, uh, one of my software development classes or, or maybe other tools. Um, so anyway, you'll see it install stuff. I mean, you might even get some warning and, and some errors. Uh, usually, uh, uh, these aren't problems, right? So I'll just scroll down here. So you'll see a lot of output. Um, I even had a few errors here, but, but these normally aren't problems. Um, uh, if you get down to the end and you see that it says that the class dev box was successfully installed, you're probably okay. Um, uh, if you have problems with this, I mean, it's, it's not really, you can always just redo this. So the easy way to redo this is if you, if you just completely delete this directory, however you normally delete a directory from your system, and then just redo the step um, four and five to, to clone the repository again and, and try the Vagrant up again. So, so if it, you can sometimes have a hiccup downloading stuff. So, so you can always try to reinstall it yourself if, if you think you had some issues. All right. Um, so when you do this, um, what is actually happening, so for this particular class, um, uh, we're running a Visual Studio um, code server. So it actually runs Visual Studio, but in a, uh, uh, in a HTTP uh, web server mode, okay? So um, 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 so, so, so to check whether this is successfully installed or not. So, so I'm going to kind of move on to the last step here. So I, I won't show you everything here. I'll leave this for later videos about how to really use your dev box. Um, you know, especially this, this might be class specific, so you might not have Visual Studio Code. So in this case, uh, the, the example I'm showing you actually sets up a, a web server, which should be running on your local machine, okay? So, um, Again, if, if I scroll all the way back up to the top here, you, you might miss this, but basically what it's doing is um, it's forwarding um, to 
um, a port number uh, 8080, the, the, the web server that's running inside of the dev box here. So you can uh, just connect to that, and, and um, for this particular class, I had that um, kind of at the end here. Um, so basically, you want to open up um, a web browser um, and, and try it on your local machine. So 127.0.0.1 is your local machine, uh, and then this particular server should be running on 8080 for this dev box. Okay, so you should be able to just click on that, um, or you know, just open that up. So 127.0.0.1.8080. So if, if you're running a Visual Studio Code uh, web-based server, um, that's what you should get. So if, if, if you direct to that address, um, it should start up the Visual Studio Code server for you. Okay. So again, if you're in a different class, you might be doing, using some other kind of a server, like Jupyter Hub server or something else, right? But um, um, but yeah, that's what you'll see for this for my COS. C2336 uh, data structures and algorithms class. You'll be running the Visual Studio Code server here like this. All right. Um, so, um, so again, let, let me warn you, you know, you shouldn't be, um, if you're using the Visual Studio Code um, or if you're using a dev box, uh, we are using VirtualBox, but you shouldn't be using the VirtualBox GUI. I already mentioned that in this particular video. So, so whenever you're done working with your DevBox, um, the, the correct way to shut it down is to go back to open up a terminal and, and, and change into that directory and use a, a Vagrant um, halt, okay? So, um, um, again, let, let me just show you that. So, so I'll open up a, a new terminal here. So for me, so again, normally, you know, your, your terminal might look a little bit different from here, but normally when you open up a terminal, it starts in your home directory, which is where I'm right here. So, so like I showed you, to get back, when you open up a new terminal, you always have to change into that directory where you cloned um, your repository down into. So, so for me, I, clone, I, I created a repo subdirectory, um, and in this directory is where I actually did the git clone, so I have to change back into that directory, the COSC2336 dev box. Now from here, this is where Vagrant is actually running. So if I want to, I can do a Vagrant halt. This will cleanly shut it down, all right? Vagrant halt. And you should see some messages here. And, and I also kind of wanted to show bringing this back up again, so restarting it, right? Um, so that should be fine. So and, and um, um, so when it's when it's halted, you shouldn't be able to. Um, sorry, you shouldn't be able to. Um, open up the server again. So so if you try and go back to that. Uh, in this case, the the port eighty eighty that we were. Uh, running the, the VS Code server on, uh, there's nothing there if your you know if, if your uh, dev box isn't running right. So again, uh, to run your dev box, you need to change that directory and use the vagrant up command again. But um, it should be a lot faster after the first time you do it, because it doesn't have to reinstall everything. It will just bring it back up. All right. So here I can talk a little bit about these. So here one message you should see is this this forwarding port, port 8080 from your dev box, which is the guest, to your host machine, okay? So so that's how you can open up a web browser and, and, and go to 127.0.0.1.8080 to get whatever server is running in your dev box, all right? Another thing I wanted to point out here, so, so I'll show this as kind of the last thing, to how to access files, okay? So normally, when you're running a dev box, um, it makes a um, it, it mounts a shared folder from your host to your guest. Okay. Um, so first of all, again, let, let, let's check again. So um, so from here, um, if I try and reload that again with my dev box running, I should be able to bring up my Visual Studio Code um, dev box. Okay. And, and in a later video. I'll show you how to use Visual Studio Code or whatever server you're using in your dev box for the class here, right? But it is running again. Uh, the other quick thing I'll show here is that normally it 
it um, we're going to mount a shared folder. So if you need to get access to files that you're creating inside of your dev box, you'll want to learn how to be able to do that as well. So for me, it, it mounts. Um, there's a directory uh, here um, inside of the repos COSC2336 dev box um, called um, assign. Well, actually, it's just mounting that whole directory. Okay, so if if I if I create a file, um, I'll just go ahead and edit a file. So I'll just do I'll just open a new file here. Um, And I'll just edit and I'll save it. So I'll give it a name, um, Home Vagrant. Uh, I need to, to save it um, into the correct place. So in, in this uh, setup, I need to save it into my sync, uh, so into my sync assignment, and I'll call it test.text, okay? So that actually created a new file inside of my server here. So if you look, uh, I can do this from the command line. So if, if I look into my um, assignment directory, um, there's a test.txt, right? Right, and and um, I can I can display um, those um, um, files if I want to. I, I can display the content of the files, okay? So, so anyway, and, and if this makes more sense, you can also um, get this from a file browser. So let me bring up a, a file browser here real quickly. Um, uh, oh, sorry. Um, Sorry about that. I had to open up a new file browser here. So again, again, your file browser might look different depending on your operating system, but if I go to my, my home directory, go to my repos, um, and, and go to that subdirectory where you did your git clone, you'll see your files. These are all on my host machine. Uh, but, but that file that I just created um, in my server was saved um, to a particular location to sync assignment. And that folder is shared on my host machine with the assignment subdirectory. So there, now we see that test.txt, um, and I can open that with um, like an editor, for example, um, and, and we'll see the content, you know, this is a test, all right? So, you know, again, the, you, should, you should kind of figure that out. So normally, you know, again, your dev box will have some way, the, a shared folder that's being shared from your host machine to your guest machine. So in, in, in this particular example, that folder, that, that folder sync assignment is being shared um, with my host machine to a folder called assignment under the subdirectory where, where we get cloned that, okay? So that'll be an easy way that you can get files um, from inside of your dev box back to your host machine if, if, you need, if you need them, for example, to submit for assignments or for whatever reason, all right? So that's basically, so there's a lot more that you'll be able to do with your server that's running on your dev box, depending on what type of server. I'll leave those for other videos, but that's the basics, all right? So, so to, um, um, to kind of emphasize on that again, so make certain that you're cleanly starting and shutting it, uh, shutting down your dev box from the command line. So, so again, if I'm done using this dev box, I want to do a vagrant halt to, to actually shut it down. Um, and, and learn how to access it, uh, however you access your server. So often, if it's a web-based server, you'll just go to a port number on your local machine to access the server um, and learn how to access your local files, um, uh, the, the, the shared files between your dev box and your host machine, all right? All right, so that's basically it for this video. Um, there's a bunch of other additional um, uh, links. Uh, you should find the, these, hopefully, um, at the bottom of that README, um, uh, you should also find these, these same links here, uh, but I'll leave that up here on the video. Um, so some links if you're interested in, you know, 
virtualization in general or Oracle VirtualBox or Vagrant. You might want to look up the docs for those. Um, if you're in this my data structures and algorithms class, you'll be learning a little bit about Git, but you might want to do the Git tutorial um, or look at the Git user's manual. Um, um, and if you're using the Visual Studio Code server, you might want to you know, find the documentation for Visual Studio Code um, if you need more specific details about using, using Visual Studio Code. All right, so that's it for this video. Um, I will see you guys then in um, um, other videos for this class, okay? So have a good day.